And you just saying a government task team led by the Gauteng Director General in the office of the Premier, Pim Dile Baleni, together with the National Health Department DG Precious Matsuze, has commenced work in preparation for the relocation of the mental health patients currently being cared for in various NGOs. The team visited the NGOs to establish the correct number of mental health patients currently being cared for at the various NGOs. Now, the representatives of families were also part of the task team to ensure that families are part of the re relocation process. Joining us on the line is Tabo Maseb, a spokesperson for the Gauteng Provincial Government. And we have in studio Andrew Mosani, national uh, office bearer and a board member of the Treatment Action Campaign. Mr. Maseb, thanks so much uh, for your time. Of course, you've had your hands quite full with this matter. Uh, this task team being uh, put together urgently and relocating uh, other patients that may not be accounted for. Uh, do we even have a number, a figure in terms of how many other patients are accounted for? Well, according to the report, uh, there's just over a thousand or about a thousand three hundred uh, uh, patients. So <clears throat> we thought it would be proper to go to the NGO so that uh, we can verify the numbers ourselves so that we uh, know exactly how many people are we talking about so that as we go to look for alternative accommodation, we know the exact number of uh, people that have to be accommodated. Well, we just say, I mean, your, your damage control strategy would obviously have to be multi-pronged, and it's very difficult to comfort loved ones who have lost uh, family members under such atrocious conditions due to maladministration, neglect, uh, and what uh, many have called uh, corruption. Was this a provincial mandate in terms of cancelling the life SEDMANI contract, uh, or was it essentially a, uh, an individual decision or an MEC's decision to take? No, now it really doesn't matter whether it was taken by the MEC or the director or the <coughs> head of department. It is a matter that uh, the Houghton Provincial Government has accepted responsibility over uh, because as the report has found, uh, the department acted uh, negligently in moving people to facilities that were ill-equipped to, to care for, for the mental uh, health uh, patients. So we're not really interested in getting there. Well, our focus now is to ensure that uh, the remaining patients who continue to, to be cared for in the NGOs are safe, that uh, nothing will happen which will put their lives in danger. And that is why we are prioritizing this uh, relocation process. All right, just please stay on the line. Andrew Mosane from uh, TAC has a question or comment for you in, in reaction to the situation. Carry on, Andrew. Mr. Masebe, uh, it's Andrew speaking from TAC. I think what we did with communication through the office of the previous MEC was that we gave, we gave a serious indication that if the patients are moved from the psychiatric, psychiatric hospitals, there's going to be a challenge because the facilities that they were moving them to, they were not having capable, you know, tools to look after mentally challenged patients. The premier was also alerted. Uh, the reason the opposition parties are saying the premier must go, it, it, it makes sense for me because the premier knew about these challenges a year ago when he came in office. Now, we pressured the Premier through TAC Gauteng to say, Premier, we want Katani gone then. Then it took time. That's why we feel the blame has to be to, in, in, in all the provincial government departments because initially the, the, the report points three people, but the Premier is the head of the province. He also needs to be responsible for the deaths of those patients. I don't see why do we have to only, you know, look at the MEC and the HOD and the director alone. The premier knew about these issues. He was supposed to act like he, he acted with removing the previous MEC for art, sport and culture. So there is no way that we can point our fingers at the only three people. How then government must take responsibility and accountability of the deaths. 94 plus counting is, is a way too much. The number the numbers doesn't speak one resignation. The resignation of the MEC doesn't say anything. And she also, the MEC, need to be accountable to the communities. Resigning from her position doesn't mean everything will go away. Yeah, let's uh, give Tabo the, uh, the, the right to reply. Uh, Mr. Masseb. Yeah, sure. Um, I, I suppose you are not suggesting that uh, 
the premier must just walk away from this problem. No, he is seized with this, and uh, he is committed to, 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 to resolving the problem. And that is why even last year he started meeting with the families. And in fact, uh, to correct uh, what you're saying, TAC never met with the Premier about this matter. The Premier only became aware when the department announced the number of people who had died after having been transferred from Life ACT Many Center. He was not aware, he was not made aware by anybody. He only uh, became aware when the department informed him. And at that time, he then called the department to explain and the department uh, assured him that uh, all was well. They had taken care to ensure that uh, people are safe. And, of course, he had no other information to rely on than what the department was telling him at the time. Sorry, uh, sorry, but sorry, sorry. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just wanting a, a bit of clarity. So you're saying that until the announcement was made in September last year of the 36 deaths, of which now we are aware that at that time there had already been 77 deaths and uh, we're sitting at 94 plus and counting, that the Premier got a false report in a sense, that he was uh, given a picture which did not depict the, you know, the true nature of this humongous uh, tragedy or rot that was happening in this case. Yes, that's exactly, he made that point yesterday at the press conference in Pretoria, that uh, the information that he was given suggested that uh, all was well. And uh, now we know that... Uh, that information was not accurate because we have the report of the health ombudsman which tells us uh, what exactly happened there. And um, the important thing for us now is to act on the recommendations of the, the ombudsman. And that is what the Premier is doing. We have accepted uh, accountability and responsibility, but uh, he has decided that he's not going to run away from the problem. The Ombudsman does not cite the Premier. He hasn't made a, a finding against the Premier. He only mentions the MEC and the officials. But even with those facts, the Premier <coughs> has said, as the leader, as the Premier, as the head of the Houghton Provincial Government, he is prepared to act, work together with the family, do everything possible to ensure that... Uh, we secure the lives of the people who continue to depend on our care and at the same time uh, to hold uh, the officials uh, that are responsible for this uh, accountable. All right, please stay on the line, Mr. Masebe. We have Simon Flungwani, a Genosa president, on the line as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Flungwani, uh, for your time. Uh, just in the sense of a moral culpability, we heard uh, even from uh, the uh, DA, uh, Jack Bloom, saying that the uh, province, at least if not National Health Department, should try and keep this out of the court so that there isn't uh, double trauma or double jeopardy for uh, the victims' families. How do you? How would you assess the treatment of this particular debacle so far on uh, the part of the uh, provincial health department? Well, thank you for having us um, and, and uh, greetings to the viewers at home. We we believe that uh, in terms of the principles of Batupili, we need to hold the government of Houting uh, responsible and accountable for whatever happened. But moreover, the families that are affected here should not be subjected to due pressure and difficulties anymore. The government must jump in and move in to ensuring that there is redress for those families that are affected. But also in terms of prioritizing the right to life, ensure that those who are still alive and are still in those institutions that are not to render these services must ensure that they are therefore moved to proper resources and facilities that they are going to be taken care of. So those are very important things. But I think over and above this, there should be lessons that we must learn from this, particularly executive authorities and accounting of, uh, officers within the departments, municipalities, and every level of government, that they must not act in a manner that does not put the right to life and 
the the well-being of the society in general at a primary phase. Because when you look at it, these psychiatric patients are one of the most vulnerable um, uh, groups of people in society. They are, they are not mm. to happen. They forfeit that. As a result, they depend on those who make decisions on their behalf in order for their well-being to, 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 to be taken care of. And it is unfortunate that it has... Yeah, Mr. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Your, your, your phone line is breaking up. We'll try and patch you again. That's Simon Llewane, Danosa President, and uh, Tabo Masebe, spokesperson for the Gauteng uh, Premier's Office. And we also have Andrew Masana from uh, TAC. We're taking your calls on 011-542-2186 in the moral culpability that needs to be afforded to those implicated and as a society, how uh, we go, f uh, you know, we entrench and um, protect the rights of uh, the right of life to the most vulnerable. Just to go back to, to your point, Mr. Masebe, saying that, you know, this is the point where we find ourselves in, in terms of moving forward and trying to create an environment that is supportive for the family uh, to, to, to give a landing hand, hand and compensate in whichever way. But beyond uh, um, what we've seen as the commiserations, you know, the condolences and regret and so forth, do you feel that uh, enough has been explained as to how this transaction even took place in affording 27 non-compliant NGOs to take on a very specialized uh, a, a set of you know, uh, patients that require specialized treatment? No, this is a matter that we are determined to follow up as the Gauteng Provincial Government. So, um, and the Premier did ind indicate yesterday that... Uh, when the new MEC for Health uh, starts uh, work, uh, this will be one of the uh, priority areas that she would have to deal with. Uh, indeed, we have to look at the systems and say, how did it happen that uh, officials uh, in the department acted in the manner that uh, uh, the report uh, uh, of the health ombudsman uh, now tells us? Uh, so we are determined to get to the bottom of those things, to correct the system, to ensure that uh, the Department of Health remains focused on the primary responsibility of caring for the people, uh, and that uh, whatever we do, whatever decision we make, at all times we have to put the people first and say, uh, if anything... Um, appears to be to have uh, negative uh, or, or unintended consequences, we surely have to pause and, and not uh, proceed with such a, a contemplated decision. All right, just please hold the line. Dipua is calling us from Alberton. Good evening to you and welcome to ANN7 Primer. What's your question or comment? Uh, how are you, Cindy? I'm very well. Under the I'm circumstances, okay. yes. I, I, I want to plead with that guy, the spokesman of the Premier, he should stop undermining the public intelligence. He's been lying and trying to do damage control for the Premier since the release of the report. He says the Premier didn't know. There were debates at the legislature. Where was the Premier about this issue? There were two marches that were done by the families of the disease. Where the, 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 the Premier not aware about it? Even pressure from the DA. Jack Bloom even had on Twitter, he had a calendar when he was counting days that putting pressure on the premier that he must fire Satani Emasang. Was he not aware of that? They must stop doing this. Government, let them go. Thank you. All right, Dipo, uh, Tabo, this is a hard one for you because now you essentially have to, you know, play the role of even responding on behalf of, of the Premier, as your job suggests. But the details, the evidence is there. Dipo was saying that there had been engagements and he can't uh, simply, you know, plead ignorance. No, no, uh, we, we did not lie, certainly. Um, once the Premier got uh, aware, became aware, as I said, uh, he called everybody, he called the department uh, uh, to get a briefing. Uh, the debate that uh, he's referring to happened afterwards. It's not before. Uh, of course, the Premier is always uh, present at the legislature. So he, he, he was aware of uh, those debates. But that, at, at that time, the Premier had already acted and the matter was already being investigated by the health uh, ombudsman. Uh, the matches that he's referring to, we're all aware of those matches. 
and the debate in the legislature. Certainly, we have no business uh, in uh, defending the politicians. Uh, the Premier said it himself yesterday that uh, if there was any suggestion by the health ombudsman that uh, the Premier has acted wrongfully, he would not even wait for people to tell him to go. All right, but but uh, the, the, the health story. ombudsman... Yeah has not made a single finding against the Premier. All right, just stay on the line, please. Simon in Kensington, uh, good evening to you and welcome to NN7 Prime. Uh, what's your question or comment? Hi, ma'am. You know, it, it, it's, it's shocking that this incident was allowed to take place over such a period of time. And absolutely nobody in government was able to pick it up. We talk about the right to life. It's something that our revered president, Nelson Mandela, protected, and that is why he did away with the death penalty. Naturally, now we can see that the, the, the that uh, in terms of democracy, we cannot trust the present government. We, as the minute we vote, we should not leave the welfare of this country in the hands of this government. We have to have checks and balances. They are useless, incompetent, and should be booted out. Thank you, ma'am. All right, Simon, thanks so much. Just want to give uh, Andrew also just a bit uh, room to, to ventilate the issues. I mean, we're talking about a decision that was poorly planned, inadequately planned, uh, executed in a chaotic manner, as the Ombuds Health Report says, and that violated the national health policy framework and also the Constitution to protect the most vulnerable in society. This is humongous in the in, in you know the, you can't explain this kind of massacre and genocide that people have called for is there what needs to be done to rectify it yes it's you know the, with the loss of life that you can't replace what what is the tac's recommendation cindy the health system in south africa is falling apart um, i can make an example of a mere para the biggest hospital in africa there are challenges in para there are many things that has to be done from the national department escalating down to provinces and districts. Um, Udipo mentioned something that is important. The MEC knew, knew about our match. The premier knew about all those matches, all those noises that we were making outside the, the MEC's office. The, M the premier's office, it's two streets down from where the MEC's office is. Mm -hmm. And there was an initiative from section 27 to speak, to meet with the MEC. We didn't want to engage with the MEC, the Premier, directly because we knew that the, 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 the law has to take its course. We are holding the Houghton government to account to the 94 deaths plus. The Premier, the MEC, the HOD, the directors must account to this. Uh, ooh, ooh, Mr. Mas ooh, Mr. Masebe, he is trying to act in a political manner where he will protect the office of the Premier. The Houghton provincial government has to account to these 94 plus lives and we are not breaking down and I'm, I'm in support of the opposition party by laying charges against the premier against the premier the MEC, and this implicated people in this in this genocide murder that was purely planted if you look at the ngos that this this patient were transferred to they don't have valid uh, registration npo numbers she knew about these issues and she just neglected the advice that she got from the experts. There were meetings after meetings that we held with the MEC in terms of advising her not to move the patient with, without adequate, you know, plan. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Masaba, that's the question in that why was this whole decision made in such a haste? Uh, and especially when it required a specialized environment and treatment of these patients. So. Oh, I believe we, we've we've lost Tabo, but you know maybe we'll continue uh, uh, patching him on the on the on the phone. Uh, we have a caller. I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Good evening. Welcome to NN Seven Prime. Good evening. It's still speaking, Ms. Lee. Yes, sir. Uh, carry on. Yeah, I just want to ask to Mr. Andrew. Besides blame blaming people and everything, what's what's the solution in everything? All right, so Lord, thanks so much. Uh, we've, yeah, I think the question was besides the, you know, pointing fingers as to who needs to be morally or personally culpable, uh, what is the sol solution going forward? The solution is moving back the patients to the relevant facilities where there is relevant equipment, where there is relevant people to care for them. That is the only solution. And the other solution moving forward is for the MEC, the, the resigned MEC, to publicly you know, apologize to these families because, you know, 
her releasing a press statement, I, I just wanted to say two things. Her releasing the press statement, it's, it's, the press statement is seriously dishonest. And the TAC doesn't welcome the, the release of the statement because she was supposed to publicly apologize to the families. I remember we went to the MEC's office and the families were there asking for the MEC to come and speak to them, to address them. She didn't. Her arrogance showed in that day that she's arrogant and she's just politically deployed. And this politically pol cater deployment kills our society. But I mean, she cites a, a very illustrious uh, career of 20 years as a public servant without any blemish, but we know that that is not entirely true. Uh, former MEC of Health, there, there have been problems uh, uh, systemically, as you were saying, even when Brian Longo was there at the time with a turnaround strategy, somehow, this particular accounting health department is not functioning. So, so, so that this is not replicated in other parts of, of the country, are you guys that you have uh, you know, the finger, your finger on the pulse to ensure that no other casualties of fatalities happen? As much as Sasha was, was speaking to you about the process moving forth and Jack, Jack Bloom on the line, I think we need to also look at the appointment of MECs, especially in Gauteng. From Brian Flomer to the current MEC, there's been a challenge in that department. But looking at the various departments, there are capable people in, in, in the Houting Health Department who can lead this department. I'm not going to speak about the appointment of the new MEC because she used to be the, the deputy minister in the national level. And she's a doctor by profession. I'm happy, personally. I'm happy about her appointment. I'm happy about... She, she is a public figure and she, she's an activist. She knows the importance of the right to life, the right to access to healthcare, and including the fulfillment of those rights in our constitution. So we, we have to meet with the new MEC and get a sense of what plan does she have mm. moving forward with regards to this mess that was caused by the previous MEC, Tratani Masang. All right, let's take a call. Rodman, thanks for holding and welcome to ANN7 Prime. Uh, you're calling us from Tembisa. What's your comment or question? Rodwin? Yeah, the phone lines are, are acting up, Andrew. But I guess there's, it gives us more time to, I suppose, give uh, a sense of comfort to, to families uh, and those that uh, may not have access to information as to where do they go. Uh, the TAC is there, of course, and there can't be any timelines yet because there's still a further probe into the nature or the cause of the deaths. We know that the conditions under which these patients, some of the patients died, was due to... Uh, neglect, dehydration, and just being in a in a filthy environment that's not, uh, uh, you know, due or rather conducive. So, going forward, the timelines. What can people expect uh, in this process? You know, it will depend as to what is the the plan of the department moving forward. But around the families, Section Twenty Seven and TAC has the whole information around communication. We have a WhatsApp page with the families through Section Twenty Seven. However, it is, it is within the system that the National Department has, take, has taken over. Uh, also, it will be wise if they give us a plan that is in place on how do they plan moving the patients back to the relevant facilities so that we don't have another chaos you know, removal from these NGOs towards the relevant facilities. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks indeed for your time. Uh, that's Andrew Mosana, You're National welcome. Office Bearer and a Board Member for Treatment Action Campaign. On the line, we had Tabo, uh, Tabo Masebe, uh, the uh, spokesperson for the Gauteng uh, province, uh, a provincial government. And we also had Simon Lungwane, uh, the NASA uh, president. We do apologize for not being able to take all the calls. There are gremlins in the system, but we'll continue uh, to keep an eye on this story. For now, though, we take a quick head break. We'll see you shortly.